Another great program today. Get ready. God is going to bless you today. With us again is John Paul Jackson. Wow, that's all I can say. I'm telling you, I'm so blessed by this man. Again with me is my brother Sammy, and joining us on the program is my dear wife Suzanne and Diane, John Paul Jackson's wife. And I'm telling you, I am ready to hear more today. You blessed me so much yesterday. I'm still, honestly, I am still amazed by some of the things you said. For example, when you talked about when we see alligators in dreams, what that means, when we see snakes in dreams, when, when we see ourselves on big planes or small planes, mm -hmm. I would have never thought that in a million years. But yet you explained it. Suzanne was just asking him about if you see sharks in a dream, and he was telling us what that means. Now listen, let's just start from the start so everybody watching this program can know what we're talking about. But God Almighty is speaking through dreams and visions yes. in powerful ways today to his people. Yes. And some of the dreams we have, sometimes we don't really understand them. Go through one more time what you said yesterday on how to interpret a dream. So when people see horses, when people see mm -hmm. alligators, when people see snakes, when people like Suzanne just asked sharks, uh, big planes, small planes, other planes, hit that up one more time because I want to hear that once again. Anytime you see a transportation, something involving a car, plane, train, bus, ship, boat, those are all representing calls of God on our lives. They're transporting us from one place in our life to the next place in our life. They are indicative of a movement where we are in a process of fulfilling God's call. So a 747, for example, would represent a large ministry. A train would represent a movement. An ocean liner would represent a large ministry, maybe of movement, but it impacts many, many people because huge bodies of water represent masses of people. You know, this is amazing because, you know, when I've read the story of Joseph and Pharaoh and other portions of the world, when they interpreted dreams, I would, you know, I sometimes would ask, well, how, how does he know that? How did he know that three loaves of bread would mean three days and so on? But God has gifted you, like Joseph and, and others, to interpret dreams. He's keep, helped me with that, keep, yes. keep, keep talking to us while I look for a scripture here that I want to read. Go well, if, if you take a look, for example, trees represent leaders. Whenever you see a tree in scripture, it always represents uh, trees on either side of the river. represents leadership wow. and what leaders that are doing. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream where he, he was a large tree and the tree got cut down and, right. and the stump was wrapped with bands. And so and the himself, greatest leader right. in the world ends up coming down and that was Nebuchadnezzar. That was himself, which it actually... Seven years later, he ended up writing uh, in his own handwriting a confession of who the one true God is and his belief in that one true God. And he wrote it in his own hand so that no one could say somebody faked this or it was a forgery. He wrote it in his own hand so that we would know, even today, that Nebuchadnezzar came into the knowledge of the one true God because he had an encounter through a dream and the dream came true. Now, talk to us a little, little more like about what you said to Suzanne about Sharks represent what again? Sharks represent, again, large mouths opening up, and they're, they're attacking. They're malicious, but they're below the surface. That's amazing. So they're not easily seen. You, in a way, you have to get below the surface or have revelation on who they because are. Because Suzanne told me one day, she said, she's, she saw sharks around me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, well I mean, who, who are they? Mm -hmm. and he actually was in, a, in an ocean, just very relaxed, just floating on his back, right. you know, and... And Jane Crouch saw the same dream Sharks about me, and around. she and Suzanne came and told me the same thing. I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. But then when the thing was revealed later, it was men hidden who were actually, just like you said, say that again. They're beneath the surface. Yeah. So you can't see them unless you have revelation. You have to be able to get below the surface, see into the enemy's camp, because they hide themselves very well. They cloak That's themselves. Amazing. Wow. Uh, the scripture from Job 33 mm -hmm beginning at verse 14 that we kind of touched on yesterday. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. So we are slow to really receiving from heaven when it comes to God speaking to us. Yeah, if we perceive it at all. Wow. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instructions, that he may withdraw men from his purpose, and hide pride from men. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. John Paul, talk to me about that. 
Well, well the first thing I would like, like to <clears throat> address would be, <clears throat> excuse me, the issue of night visions. Most people think that visions come in the day and dreams come at night, but even in Scripture, that's really not so. Because, for example, Daniel chapter 7, verse 1, Daniel had a dream on his bed, in his head, and the vision of the night troubled him. So you, you're either going, well, what is this? Was this, was this a dream? Was this a vision? Was it in his head? The reality was, Pastor, he, he literally had this happen. He had a dream, and in the dream he had a vision. Many people have dreams, and in the dream have visions, or have a dream, and in the dream have a dream. Yeah, explain that, because uh, yeah. I, 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 I wanted to ask you if you have a dream within a dream, what that yes. means. But keep talking to me. Okay, well, just very quickly, to interpret a dream within a dream, you have to treat it in a way, this may sound kind of strange, but you have to treat it like an algebraic equation in a way. In algebra, you're taught to interpret the innermost equation, which will give you the answer to a missing element of the outermost equation. So you, you interpret the middle dream first, which gives you the answer for something in the larger dream that surrounds it. And so you use the inner dream to give you the clues to the outer dream. Okay. Let's go back to something you said on the program yesterday, visions and dreams. Mm -hmm. In Numbers 12, just one more mm -hmm. time hit on that one, just in case some of you have missed it. They really need to hear that. Well, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 6, God tells Aaron and Miriam that if there's a prophet amongst them, he will make himself known through visions. He will speak to them through dreams. So making himself known is an, uh, an indication that I will clearly communicate to people through visions. That means less metaphor and more literal meaning in visions. But in, if I'm going to speak to you, if God's going to speak to you, he's saying if, that I will, speak to you, I will speak to you in such a way that I may speak in mysteries. I may speak in dark speech. He goes on in Numbers 12 to say, I may speak in enigmas or riddles. Um, and it's up to you then to find out the answer. Many of us think that if we don't have the answer immediately, we must be less than spiritual. But again, Proverbs 25, 2, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of a king to search the matter out. Kings will have the patience to search for the answer of God. It's like this. When I was a child, I had a vision of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He stood there with his arms outstretched to me, and he was smiling. Now, I was sleeping. Right. I was dreaming, but it was a vision. But it was a vision. Because I saw the Lord very clearly. Yes. It was a very clear cut revelation of the Lord. Yes. But a dream has parables in mm -hmm. it. Metaphors, parables, yeah. hidden meanings. I have to look for the meaning. Yes. Like you were saying earlier, big planes, small planes, mm -hmm. different kind of animals mean different kind of things and much more. Uh, let's get back to the scripture in Job 33, where it says here, in a dream, in a vision of the night, and you just explain that, mm -hmm. when deep sleep falleth upon men mm -hmm. in slumberings upon the bed. Explain that to us a little bit. Well, the, the deepest part of a sleep is, a, is our dream sleep, and it's typically what the science would call REM sleep, REM sleep, or rapid eye movement, and it usually occurs about the fourth cycle of sleep in the night. I heard that from a doctor recently, yeah. But the question in the medical community becomes this. And in the psychological community, why is it that gifted people dream immediately upon going to sleep? Gifted people? Yes. Wow, thank you for the compliment. Because I, I, the second I fall asleep, I dream. You're already in a dream. I believe that. Sometimes I'll wake up right, right away after that. Mm -hmm. And Not, you can tell the dream and, and what was happening and everything. Oh, sure. I, I can tell you details. Yes. Now, when you wake up, it also means something? Yes. It usually means write this down. <laughs> oh! It's the Holy Spirit I've saying. never written, I've never written my dreams down because I remember them so well. Yeah. But well, you suggest we write them down. Most people don't remember them so well. And so they write, writing them down helps them, them to retain them, helps them to understand them. Now, once, once you get to a place where that you recognize your dream and you're in the Spirit, immediately you recognize the Spirit upon you, then it becomes etched in your memory, and you don't have, you don't have to take so much of a trouble to write the things okay, down. Uh, finish with that verse, and then I'm going to ask you uh, how to know if a dream is about you or somebody else. Okay. Please. Well, the, the verse here, the, an interesting part of this verse also, Pastor, is that God seals our instructions. There's two things inherent in that particular passage, and that would be, or that particular statement, and that would be this. One, what does sealing mean? And then two, that we actually get instructions from God in dreams and visions. 
He tells us what we're going to do. He puts it into our spirit what wow. we're going to do. But then he says he seals Amazing, it. Right? Now, the sealing has actually two, two issues involved with it. One, the seal is that this is going to happen. I just put my signet ring on it. It is now going to happen. But the sealing also has a second connotation, and that's this, that you don't remember that he spoke to you sometimes. Why? Because it might lead you to pride. Therefore, he keeps men from pride by sealing the dream so they don't remember it. That is the best explanation I've ever heard of that. Please say it again. God seals our dreams so that we don't see it like an envelope. You put a letter in the envelope, yeah. you seal the envelope, you don't see the contents. He does that to keep us from falling into pride. And here's what could happen. We could be a Joseph. <laughs> hey, guys, I got a coat of many colors. And guess what? You guys are going to bow down to me. A few weeks later, hey, I had another great dream. Not only are you guys going to bow down to me, every king on the earth is going to bow down to me. There's pride. And see what happened to Joseph in the process. So God gives us examples of those issues. And then he says, I'm going to seal some dreams from you to keep you from your own agenda and keep pride from entering into Matt, your heart. please do something right now. I, I'm getting so overwhelmed because you're answering questions I've had. Can I just stop here and thank the Lord because sure, I feel the presence it. of God here. Jesus, we give you praise. Yes, we do. Lord, I pray as John Paul yes, ministers do, and continues to that you'll speak to your people mightily in Jesus' name. You know, I've wondered why the Lord has sealed and has kept things from me. What I would have a dream, and then it, it would take a little time before I saw it, before I mm -hmm. understood it. He was protecting me. Yes. Mm -hmm. What happens in those type of dreams, wow, often, Jesus, often people call you. those uh, deja vu type experiences. They're not really deja vu. That's the world's word for it. What it really is, is you just remembered a dream, and something that you, you saw reminded you of that dream and yeah, it's coming exactly. to pass which says you are on the path that I've chosen for you and I'm giving you a little marker or a sign a post that says destination 10 miles destination 15 miles destination one mile let me tell you about one I had that mm -hmm. it is still sealed even though others have said well this is what it what it it, it means it's almost like a spiritual wall mm -hmm. I can't see it okay I was standing at a stream I looked across the stream and I saw the prophet Elijah mm -hmm. and he gave me his staff. Mm -hmm. As I took his staff, I looked across and there was Oral Roberts and Evelyn Roberts. They looked much older than they are now. Mm -hmm. Oral is 84 now and so on. Well, anyways, they, they, they looked older. He looked probably another five or more years older than he is now. And he and I are very, very close, and Evelyn and we're really close to him because God has put something very, very special between us. But anyways, I said to him, Doc, Doc, that's what I call him. I said, Doc, Doc, look what, what Elijah gave me. And Elijah, before he gave me the staff, he was turning streams of water into blood. Mm -hmm. And as he gave it to me, I began to do the same. Mm -hmm. And that's when I saw oral and saw Evelyn and said, look what he gave me. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything about, look what I'm doing with it. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything about that. So he came over and he touched the tip of the, the, the top of the staff. As he did, Oral Roberts became young again, instantly, just like you see him when you saw his old uh, uh, meetings and his 10 meetings. And now he was praising the Lord with all his being, just praising him. Here was young Oral Roberts, praising God with all his might. But Evelyn was not changed. And so I said to him, Doc, Doc, why don't you let Evelyn come touch it? Why don't you let Evelyn, so she can be young again? Mm -hmm. But he would not hear me. He did not even seem to pay attention to what I said. Instead, he just kept praising the Lord. And his praise got louder and louder and, and louder. And I woke up hearing his voice in my ear, right. ringing my ears, praising the Lord. I've had different people try to interpret their dream to me. but. Even though they have, it's like a veil over my eyes. I can't see it. For the first time, Jesus, blessed be your name. I'm sorry, I'm just feeling something in my being here. Wow. For the first time in my life on this program, I just understood why the Lord has held it back from me. Yes. 
if God should show it to me... It could damage your future. You got it. So he doesn't let it become revelation to you. It's knowledge to you, but it's not revelation to you. And when it becomes revelation to you, it sinks into your inner man and now becomes a quickening spirit inside of you that makes it happen. So the Lord doesn't want it to happen until it's time. Now, Sue, you've had these things happen to you. You've had dreams that the Lord has held back from you. Mm -hmm. And you've had others that the Lord just, you knew right there. Yeah. Well, recently, you know, the Lord, um, one thing that I felt that the Lord said to me was the one thing in the body of Christ that the enemy has used against Christians is really ha having, um, messing up their sleep patterns. Yes. And the Lord, I felt, said to me, you know, well, what happens when you go into a, a deep sleep? And I said, well, you get visions and, and, and dreams. And he says, exactly. And that's why the enemy keeps a lot of my children from really getting into that deep sleep to rob them from the visions and dreams. I just thought it was... You're saying God's children, God, not God, ours, God, right? Yeah, but I always felt that it was, that the enemy did it, was just, you know, kind of wear us down so that we could be attacked, but then we get up again. So but the enemy is disturbing, disturbing our sleep our pattern, sleep pattern right. so we can't really get exactly. into the deep sleep of the visions So you can't really dreams. have dreams because, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you have dreams, but you don't remember them because they're exactly. fitful. You wake up in the middle of them. Yeah. And I just want to say to both of you, thank you so much for being led by the Spirit for coming at this time, because this is definitely the timing of the Lord for the body of Christ, for us to understand the dreams and visions that God, the Lord obviously wants to bring us into. So thank, thank you for your sensitivity. Thank you. You know how that, uh, how that happened was we had a couple of staff people that had dreams uh, last week and the week before about um, that Pastor Benny was going to call us and that, that he was going to want to do a program on dreams and visions, and that when he got that phone, when we got that phone call, we were to go. So when we got the phone call, we said, "This is the Lord. Here we go." This, this is amazing. Very easy to do. Wow, yeah. Sammy, you want you want to say something? Yeah, just uh, when when you talked about yesterday, you talked about Joel two. You quoted Joel two and then Acts two, mm -hmm. and I was just listening to what Pastor said a few minutes ago about how God protected him. That that yeah. the, the the ceiling of the dream. Then you look at Acts two and the whole thing about young men and the old men and right. then then you see all these things and the, the wonders in the heavens yes. and then the end of it is that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be, saved. shall be saved the mercy of God his love for us so so my question would be is what do you see coming in in the realm in that realm in the world you know the just the move of God in this sense well uh, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit about uh, a month ago maybe six weeks ago the most powerful, intense, physical manifestation of the Holy Spirit that I've ever had. I, I literally did not know the Holy Spirit could manifest Himself in such a way. It was so, so real to me that after it was over with, I was laying in bed and I just was crying and shaking. I could hardly catch my breath. My wife, my wife was worried for me. She thought I was having a heart attack or something. and She, she was trying to comfort me. And here's what the Holy Spirit told me. He showed me incredible miracles that are going to be coming. He showed me creative miracles. He showed me healings. He showed me salvations. Yeah. And there was a, without going into too much detail, I just said there was a presence of the Holy Spirit that came in such intensity. It was thick like honey. And any, anybody who entered into the physical location, it's like a cylinder would be in the, in the, in the church or, or out on the street. And if you entered into that cylinder, what the Holy Spirit, that location, I just say cylinder, but that location, if it, he would have already prepared people to be saved when you pray for them. And he would have already been wooing them, and they will come in before the end of the service. They will come running into the church. Salvation will happen. And um, I saw in this, in this encounter as well, I saw people who entered into it who were instantly healed, didn't get touched by anybody. They walked into the Do presence you see when of the Holy Spirit. Happen? Jump off. It's not that far away. He said the key to it is relationship and loving the lost we have that's, that's he's going to use he's going to use prophetic evangelism and various forms of evangelism worship evangelism to bring in the lost and when here's what he said when the walls that separate my gifted people come down so they learn to work together and have relationship then i'm going to release a marvelous outpouring of my omnipotence so we have to pray that god will bring us together like this yes diane go ahead dear um, well, just a couple things when he was, he was sharing, one about the prophetic evangelism. Uh, a young salesman came to my door one day, and um, he was just going through his little spill, and, and eventually he found out I was in the ministry, 
and suddenly I started mentioning dreams and he he came alive and he wanted to tell a repetitive dream he'd had and and was so open about it and I was just in awe standing there sharing with him for the longest yeah. time thinking and and a dream you know brought this about and then an, another thing in uh, in dream some of my favorite are, are ones that minister to me and deepen my spirit Okay, now that brings me to a question how to know when a dream is about you or somebody else it's very simple actually if you are the focus of the dream by the focus I mean if you were removed from the dream and it would fall apart you know you're the focus whatever the focus is if you remove it from the dream the dream doesn't have any meaning any longer so if you're the focus of the dream all attention is on you the dream is about you many dreams though we are not the focus so much as we're participating with other people in the dream we're in a team of people trying to get something done we're in a group trying to speak to something there's we're in an activity that's that we are a part of but we are not the direct focus the group is more the focus than us as a person that is about something you are participating in and or friends that, that are around you, church friends and, and relationships. The third way is, are you observing? Now, it's easy to find out if you're observing in a dream because usually one of two things happens. First of all, is you feel like when you're looking, you're looking from maybe three feet off the ground, always looking into something versus being a part of something. So you're looking into it as if they can't see you. Sometimes you can be observing and you're walking amongst the people, but they don't know you're there. So that would be an obs observation place as well. That means the dream is about someone or something else, not about you and not really about anything that you're, you're particularly close to. Listen, on the program tomorrow, we may even get a chance to ask one of them today, what is a soul dream? How can you tell one? Uh, and then I want to ask you, can you learn to interpret a dream yourself? I'll do this on tomorrow's program, so make sure to be watching. Uh, why would God give us dreams that are difficult to understand? Why does he make them so hard? Oh, I think... You want to answer that now? I can. Okay, sure. go, go, please. The, the, the question uh, basically comes down to this. It's what I call the clarity-cost relationship. The clearer God speaks, the more difficult it's going to be. Therefore, vision would be more difficult to be fulfilled than a dream because dreams are metaphorical, dreams are full of symbolism, so it's vague speech, so to say. Listen, we're almost out of time, but something else I want to ask you tomorrow is do dreams always come in a series? Because I've had them come in a series. And can you have a dream within a dream? And how do you interpret that kind of dream? There's a lot more I want to talk to you about tomorrow. In fact, you and I are going to open our Bibles and have like a little Bible study tomorrow. I am looking forward tomorrow and I know you are too now listen John Paul has a book and some tapes that would help you immensely now first of all this book called uh, moments with God dream journal please tell yes. us what's in there probably the most unique dream journal that's been that's I've ever seen the Lord gave actually gave me the format of this dream journal on a visitation that I had at one time saying you must do it like this so or reach the most people so it actually helps you step by step walk through filling in the blanks of what the dream is about. It has graph paper in it it's, as well as lines in it. And that's important, Pastor, because some people draw their dreams versus writing their dreams. So this helps them to draw mm. out the dreams. You can diagram dreams. And you this can, also helps you interpret your own dreams yes. and yes. explains them. There's so five, there's, we give five different methods of recording dreams from cluster method to circle methods and so on. Also in there, we have the colors of God. We have how to interpret dream symbols and elements, as well as what is, it, what is it, how to tell when the dream is about you and about somebody else. I'll be the first one to get this book, even before you get it, little young lady. Uh, understanding dreams and visions. Now, these are six tapes you have in there. Yes. What about? Please tell me what's in there. Well, those six tapes basically are, are what has come to me over 20 years of dream interpretations to help people start learning the skill to understand dreams. What God is, has given, given is, needs to be taught so it can be imparted. We have, but we're, I believe we've entered into the most prolific dream era of the Christian church, perhaps I since believe the that. early church. I believe that. And with that, we have to have an understanding. How do you interpret a dream? When do you know it's from God? What does a cow mean? What does a horse mean? What does a bicycle mean? What does friends mean or relatives mean, etc.? <laughs> you have to have all How oh, I wish I had this years ago. Listen to this. 
um, unravel the mysteries of dream interpretation in this inspiring series and discover how to apply God-given insights in your waking life. Yes. From dreams and visions to translations and transportations. Yes. You won't want to miss these fascinating insights from a gifted dream expert. And believe me, he is. I am amazed by all I'm hearing, and I know we're going to hear way more tomorrow. In fact, he nearly blew us away before the programs with some of the things you were sharing with us. It was tremendous. Thank you. Praise God. There are very, very, very few people on earth, I think, like you, really. Listen, you can get a book and these tapes, six tapes, for a $75 donation. Or separately, you can get these tapes for $40 and the book for $35. I'll tell you what, if I was you, I'd get both because there's a lot of information in this that's not in this book and a lot in this that's not that's in, right. in these tapes. That's so again, right. for a $40 donation, these tapes, or a 35 this book or both for 75 this is tremendous wow this week i'll be in anaheim california for a great service at the anaheim convention center this friday 7 p.m this is of course may 24th then uh next or oh, this this coming sunday 7 p.m may 26th i'll be at west west angeles cathedral bishop blake's church for a great service then we, we come for a great crusade, May 30, 31, at the Schottenstein Center in Columbus, Ohio. Then I come to Sydney, Australia, June 7 and 8 at the Sydney Entertainment Center. Then Dallas, Texas, June 27, 28 at the American Airlines Center. Toronto, Canada is July 11 and 12 at the Air Canada Center. Then we come to New Jersey, East Rutherford at the Continental Airlines Arena, July 25, 26, for a great crusade. All these will be mighty crusades. Then Washington, D.C. is uh, August 29 and 30 at the MCI Center, and Louisville, Kentucky, September 19, 20, and 20 at the Freedom Hall. We'll give you much more, of course, on upcoming programs. Don't miss tomorrow, but now let's, let's believe God to speak to you mightily. Father, in Jesus' name, speak to your people, I pray. Make your word and your voice clear to each one in Jesus' name. In these last days, we give you all the glory. And Lord, anoint every program this week with John Paul Jackson. God's people said, Amen. The multifaceted ministry of Benny Hinn is touching the world with the saving, healing, and life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Through massive crusades, daily television, feeding programs, orphanage support, church planning projects, and much, much more. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because this is your day to experience God's miracle working power in your life. much on these programs with our friend John Paul Jackson as he's been talking about dreams and visions. Fascinating programs. I'm telling you, I am learning things. It's just been amazing. Today on the program, I'll be asking him questions again about, about dreams and visions. For example, why does God give us dreams in a series? Why does the Lord make some of them difficult to understand and so much more? Uh, before we taped this program, we, we were talking about the fact that some believers today are looking elsewhere for interpretation of dreams. And there is a danger in that, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We must stay with the Bible. We must stay in the Scripture. I'm very troubled by the fact that I've heard uh, where some believers even uh, watch psychics. Uh, uh, some believers are looking uh, to... to uh, satanic areas without knowing it because there is no teaching out there there's there's no warning saying you look look you can't go beyond the borders of scripture we must stay within the borders of the Bible to stay safe because anything outside that is demonic and destructive right. address that again because I think it is so important that we repeat that and you said some things earlier to me that about people I never even really heard of so please forgive me but I'm sure many of our viewers will know who, who, you, who you're talking about. But again, 
it is so important to stay with the Bible. Yes. There's many dream interpretive processes that are out there in a secular community. And the problem is when they go to many secular bookstores and even into some Christian bookstores, they'll find books that are not really godly in their interpretive process. They'll, they'll find books that espouse a secular method of, of uh, interpreting dreams that appears to be godly, but it, there's many ways, well, like Proverbs says, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death and destruction. Well, uh, there's all these New Age books out sure. there where people read these books and they think they're Christian books, but they're not. Right. Exactly. And when you understand that, what happens is this, Pastor. You can read these, these dream processes. You can use the model that they give to you. But the problem is you won't come up with the same interpretation that Scripture did. So when you look at the dreams in the Bible and the interpretation that an angel gave or God gave or the prophet gave, you will not come up to that same conclusion if you use okay, now, some of these other models. John Paul, one more thing. It is dangerous to even be reading these other materials yes. or looking at programs that deal with other things outside the Bible because people are opening themselves up to the demonic. That's right. And so, we, you know, I, we, we can't say this enough to say it is imperative that God's people understand that. Now, the devil copies what God does. Yes. I mean, the Lord, through his word, shows us how dreams were interpreted. And that's why we're doing these programs on This Is Your Day, because, you know, there's so much of this out there today. Many people are watching these programs out there today. Uh, many people are talking about dreams and visions and all this stuff. I mean, you have programs today on the, on the big networks about uh, visions and about prophecies and all kinds of stuff. Or talking to the dead. Ex that's becoming very popular. I'm so glad you mentioned that because the dangers out there are tremendous. When people watch programs that deal with talking to the dead, yes. not only do you allow demons in. Now listen to what John Paul has to say about this a second. When you, allow, when you do that, you give them space. Whatever you focus on, you make room for in your life, and you empower. You empower those forces to act. That's why... That, the, is, that is very important. When you... When the Scripture tells us, do not consult with horoscopists, do not deal with necromancy, do not deal with soothsayers or wizards who peep, magicians, etc. And it says, if you do this, you're under a curse. The reason why is because you've just said, I'm seeking information from demonic sources, therefore I make them greater than God. Because I have said, that's who I'm looking to, to give me information, versus looking to God to give me information. You've just empowered a whole demonic force that now has room not only to your mind and your spirit, but now has access to your heart. Remember what happened to Saul. King Saul sought a witch in Endor, and the result was his destruction. Yes. He brought a curse on his life. And, and it is so imperative we understand this. Do not ever look into the demonic realm. Stay with the Lord. And this is why I'm so ex excited that John Paul is with me today addressing this. We have to address it. People do have dreams. People do have visions. But let's stick with the Bible. Let's seek the interpretation of Scripture and the Holy Spirit and not go beyond that into this weird stuff and buy books and magazines and listen to all kinds of crazy tapes that are demonic. Right. or be watching things, or on our own networks. Television networks are airing this junk out there from the devil. Be careful. I pray the Lord will protect you and give you discernment yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, amen. We have to do that. And we have to also be on guard not only for the obvious, but we have to also have to be on guard for the, the things that come from what I call come from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It, it's easy to tell if something is evil. That's not, that's not hard. You can say, if somebody walks up and, and stabs you, we know that that's evil. But what about the difference between good and God? Many times we in the church today, wow, that's powerful. we think that if something is good, then it must be God. But that is not what the scripture says. There is a tree that has there's a tree of knowledge, the knowledge of what? Good and evil, and both of them lead you to destruction. Both of them is eternal damnation. There's many dream interpretive processes out there that look good, but they are not from God. And what they can do is they can slowly suck you and allure you into a place of dependence on knowledge versus the spirit. 
the tree of life is the tree of the spirit. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Yeah. Now let me just say something else too. Watch what your children are watching. Yes. Don't let your kids be by themselves watching TV and you're doing something else, not paying attention. And here your child, 10 years old or whatever, watching these crazy things on TV and demons getting hold of their minds. People of God, I pray the Holy Spirit will so speak to you through this that he will give you power over the enemy in Jesus' name and keep you protected, and keep your family protected. Now, let's keep talking, and I do have some questions for you. Are you all done with this, or you want to yeah, say a little no, more? Yeah. Okay, Let, let's, let's quickly talk about um, dreams now. First, why does God make dreams difficult to understand? Because the process is important to him. The process of searching the matter out, the process of understanding him. So, when he hides an, a matter, and he give, by hiding it, I mean he speaks in a metaphor, or he speaks in, a, in symbols, or he speaks in parables, he wants you to search, because part of that searching process gives us eyes to see. Excellent. It gives us spiritual eyes. Our eyes are matured, our spiritual eyes are developed, and we have eyes to see. In Matthew 13, Jesus has an interesting comment that where he gives the parable of the seed and the sowers and the four way that the word of God is sown. He says this, he says, and, and it, the whole context of that passage is the issue of hearing from God. The issue of why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus said, because they have eyes to see, but see not, ears to hear, but hear not, neither right. do they understand. But he also says this, unto he who has, more will be given yeah, right. and in abundance. He who has what? The ability to hear from God. Not just to hear from God, but the broad spectrum of hearing from God. So that when he gives you a dream, you hear from God. When he gives you a vision, you hear from God. When he gives you a word of knowledge, you hear from God. When he gives you a knowing, you hear from God. It's the entire spectrum of God that he wants you to be able to hear. Then there's a second requirement, and that is you have to take action and respond to what God gives you. If you take action and respond, here's what he says, and to him who has, has more will be given and in abundance. And he's talking wow, about that. hearing from God. The context is, if you hear from God, more will be given. And if you respond properly, you will have not only more, but you have in abundance, running over, you will have revelation from I'm God. Looking, I, was, I was looking for, this, for the scripture where it says in Mark 4, verse 24, exactly what, what you said, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Yes. That's exactly more what the Word of God says. You're in line with the Bible. Right. I love it. Now, so God Almighty makes it difficult so we might seek Him. Yes. Yes. And I believe as we seek Him, there is a death that takes place in us. There is. There's a, a death, death of our flesh. Self. Exactly. Self. Exactly. exactly. Because, you know, it's really, it's, it's his nature to hide. In Isaiah 45, he said that. He said it's his nature to hide so we can go look for him. Yeah. Keep talking to us. Well, you mentioned this is very, very important. In Acts 17, chapter tw uh, verses 26 through 28, it talks about how God has determined the exact places we should live, the exact time of our, our anointing, so that we might grope for him and find him, though he's not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. It's not just going out to the store daily. It's not just going to the office daily. It's living and moving and having our being in Him, which would include dreams, visions, visitations, everything that God has. We need to grow in having our living and moving and having our being in Him. And if we recognize that, more will be heaven and given to us and in abundance. But here's the other side. Wow, I love this. If we fail to respond to God's initiation. Okay, now. We have to talk about this because this is really important. If we hear it, we receive more. Mm -hmm. God speaks to you in a, in a dream. You hear it. You pursue to understand it. God gives you another dream. If you, ign if you ignore it, you kill the, the process. Right. That's right. Uh, what you have will be taken away. That's what Scripture exactly, says. Exactly. Now, some may say, well, God doesn't speak to me. Oh, yes, He does. Yes, He does. You just d don't recognize, the, you didn't recognize the fact He did. It's very sad when you hear things, and I, and I did one time years ago by, back in Canada, where somebody says, well, God doesn't, you know, God really doesn't talk to me, so that's why I go look for other sources. I oh. said, then you're looking to the devil oh. to talk to you. 
the sad thing is when God does speak, they don't even recognize it's God, and they, they right. say to them, well, God doesn't speak to me, so that's why I'm doing all this nonsense. And you wonder whether those individuals are even born again. Right. There is a wonder there. Exactly. But when God does speak to us, we must seek the interpretation yes. through the Scripture yes. with the help of the Holy Spirit yes. in prayer, mm -hmm. and He'll give us more. Exactly. Pastor, I, I'd like to ask us, say this as well. It's not just seek the interpretation, because sometimes the interpretation can be a selfish motive on our part. Here's what I like to do. When I get a dream and I don't know what the dream is, I don't know the understanding, before I even pray for the interpretation, I pray and I say, God, you know what the interpretation of this is. Whether I know or not, you know. Father, you also know what you want the outcome to be. Yes. Now I pray that before I even understand it, you direct the outcome of this. Whether it's for myself or whether it's for another church or another pastor or for relatives or whoever, whoever it may be for, I'd say, Father, you understand. And therefore I'm asking above my desire to know, I'm asking that your will come to pass in this issue. So now here's what's happened. I put God's will first Excellent. and my own desire second. Now, he wants us to know the interpretation, but he wants us to give the option back to him. And we present that back to him so he can take action because we now have prayed. Now, he's justified in taking action because our will has said, your will be done. That's and, the issue of and justice. When we, and when we seek the Lord, as Mark uh, 4, 24 says, more will be given, the more will be more visions. Yes, more, more clarity, yeah. more of everything. Now, uh, God sometimes gives us dreams in a series. Yes. Why? Because, well, it's a couple things. One, it can be because we're not paying attention the first time. And we okay. don't catch it, so he says, I'm going to tell you again. I'm going to tell you again in a different way so that you know this is me. The second reason he gives it, because he give gives it like the, like, uh, the size of a cube. We look at, at various sides of a cube, and there's six different sides to that cube, and he wants us to give us different perspectives on each issue that's going on in our lives. Thirdly, he does this because he is a God that wants to share secrets with us, and the secrets can be broad and multifaceted. So dreams can deal with a different facet of God's secret on the same matter, the same subject. That's amazing. So I, wow. I, I'm just... What happens is I, I get hungry to know more because he'll give me a tidbit and I'll understand a fragment of what that means. And I can almost hear him saying, son, ask me again. I want to tell you something else. Ask me again. I want to tell you something else. So what I try to do is respond in such a way that justifies God giving me more. Now, I want to tell you something. When I was a child and I saw the Lord in a vision, at the same time, I had a dream that I have never shared. This is the first time I ever talk about it, period. I have never shared this dream in all my years as a Christian. This is the first time. I used to be an altar boy mm -hmm. in the Greek Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, I was the little kid who walked behind the priest and carried the cross as he wow. would, as, as he would uh, be praying in Greek and sometimes the frankincense would be so overpowering, I would almost choke behind him. And at the end of the, of the service, I would go to his place where uh, there was always the people that served that Sunday morning would all go together, and we would have lunch. One Sunday, something happened. I had, a dr I, I, I had this awesome dream where I saw myself again in the church. I was at the altar boy. Mm -hmm. I was always doing it on Sunday, but I was dreaming all this now. Mm -hmm. And I saw myself uh, in the church, following the priest, going into where the altar is and sitting on the side as he was ministering. Suddenly, suddenly there appeared in the, uh, where the altar is, there appeared a circle of fire a circle of fire that appeared in midair and was turning and turning and turning. It turned three times. And then I woke up. Mm -hmm. That Sunday, I went to church. I did the, my, my part in the service. I was probably, my Joshua's age, maybe 10 years old. 
And I sat on the side and I looked across, wondering if the circle would appear to me mm. because I just saw it in my dream. Mm. Within days, Jesus appeared to me. Mm -hmm. Now, that series came. I wasn't even born again in those days. I was just a little religious boy growing up in Jaffa, Israel. But it was a series. Right. God spoke first in the dream, showing me the circle, right. which is the Trinity. Right. That's right. I, I knew that even then. Yeah. And then Jesus appeared in the vision. Sometimes we can have encounters like a dream or a vision that prepare us for the next encounter. That's what I believe. I believe the, the circle of fire I saw in the Greek Orthodox Church in my dream, that this was a dream like you talk about a dream within a dream, by sure. the way, and I want to ask you about okay. that in just a second. But I, b I believe that prepared me for the visitation in that vision, because otherwise, maybe I, would have made, I wouldn't have been prepared. Right. It not, not only can, can prepare you in understanding, it can prepare your spirit so it's etched and it's oh, not I forgotten. Oh, I love that. So it prepares your spirit. There's many things that God does with us. It's not for that moment. It's for a week from now. He's preparing your spirit for what you're going to respond. So, well, let me rephrase that. He's preparing your spirit so that you will respond properly when the unction to take action happens. So he will prepare me, wow. and now I can receive what he wanted to give because I was prepared by the Holy Spirit. He prepares us. It's the same principle as no one, no one comes to the Father except the Holy Spirit woos him. It's that preparation process for spiritual encounter. And, and that principle is true throughout our life. And amazing is, to this day, I remember that dream. Yes. I was a little boy. I'm now 49 years old. I was only maybe 9 or 10. Let me ask you about a dream within a dream. Mm -hmm. Why do we have that? Because, again, it's part of the searching the matter out process. It's more complicated. It takes more of an effort on our part. But also, it, it, is, uh, it usually denotes phases of things that are going to happen. So you have uh, the inner interior dream that you interpret first. That gives you understanding for the exterior dream. So the interior dream usually will happen, the sign of that will happen before the conclusion of the larger dream happens. So in a way, it wow. gives you a sequence. It helps you understand the sequence of the fulfillment. John Paul, on a different program, you had mentioned writing your dream. Yes. W well, please. Let's talk about that. Well, again. part of the writing of the dream is the proper response. And so either you... The proper response meaning what? Now? Meaning, I'm, I think this is so important for the Lord, I don't want to forget it, and okay. so I'm going to write this dream down. I will interrupt what I'm doing in order to cooperate what the Holy Spirit's doing. So I will get up and I will write this dream down. Now, the purpose of writing it down is so that you remember it. Exactly. I, I, I don't write down that many dreams because I remember them now. Same you don't write here, yeah. that because we remember them. Because when you get into the spirit and you live in that a spiritual night, then those type of things become automatic in your life. You have a habit of remembering spiritual, spiritual things. Your spirit retains it. As you're developing that, though, it's important to write the dream down. It cultivates your spirit to be in tune. Not only does it do that, it causes you to go to bed with the idea that God might speak to you again tonight. So you're anticipating and hoping that he will speak to you because you've written it down. There's something that happens when you write a dream down. For example, David said in, in First Chronicles, he said, I understood how to build the temple by writing the dream down. In other words, as I wrote the dream down, understanding came into my mind. God gave me insight to the patterns of the temple by writing it down. What I found, uh, and especially on dreams that, that are difficult or long, I will write some of those down. And as I'm writing it down, I understand some of the words and some of the meanings that I did not understand before just because there's something that happens when you take it from a, a dimension of spirit into the natural and your hand is doing it and your eye is watching. So it becomes visual and it becomes two of the five senses. You see it and you, and you feel it as you're writing it down and understanding comes. So it's a response to the Lord to do that. What, what we've, we try to do is encourage people to write down dreams in ways that work for them. Because many of us say, boy, it takes, I have a five minute dream and it takes me an hour to write the dream down. Or it seems like a five minute dream. So uh, what we do is we try to teach people different ways of writing a dream down that will be faster so they then can go back and capture the entire dream.
You know what I want you to do right now? I want you to pray for God's people, that the Amen. Lord will speak to them clearly, that the anointing of God will always be on them, pray protection over them, mm. pray that God Almighty will keep them safe from the enemy. Yes. Go ahead, please. Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Whose testimony is the spirit of prophecy. And Father, you give us things. You search, your spirit searches to give us things. And so, Father, we ask you that we would see and capture and recognize when you're speaking to us in any form that you might speak it. But, Father, there's also the enemy goes about as a roaring lion seeking who he might destroy. And so, Father, we ask you to also to take the people that hear this message and would tend to run off in wrong directions, I ask you to surround them by your Holy Spirit Amen. and to put your angels around them to keep them seeking after the God of the living and not the God of the dead. Father, we ask you to pour out your Spirit in greater measure so that all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Father, we ask you to do this, not only to spread your kingdom, but to advance your kingdom through the multiplication of those who don't know you to those who do know you, taking them from the realm of darkness into the kingdom of your most glorious light. Lord, we ask you to give us wisdom in this issue of dream interpretation. We ask you to give us discernment in this issue of dream interpretation. We ask you to give us discretion in the issue of dream interpretation so that we'll know when to say it and when to pray it. Father, we ask you to give us understanding and insight, Father, so that we would exercise wisdom in how to go about the proclamation of the revelation. Grant these things to us, for it's your kingdom that is to be advanced, and it's your power that is to be seen, for the interpretation surely does belong to you. We ask you to grant this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Lord, we do agree. Protect your people from the enemy. Keep them safe in your arms. In Jesus' name, anoint them always. God's people said, Amen. Amen. These tapes and this book are a must by John Paul Jackson. First, these tapes, Understanding Dreams and Visions. Unravel the mysteries of dream interpretation in this inspiring series and discover how to apply God-given insights in your waking life from dreams and visions to translations and transportations. You won't want to miss these fascinating insights from a gifted dream expert. A little more, tell us what's in these tapes, please. Those tapes are a compilation of the 20 years of serious study on dreams that I've done and drawing closer to God because you hear and recognize His voice the colors that mean things, the symbols that mean things, the hidden mysteries of the kingdom in the kingdom issue, the issue of understanding dreams from a scriptural basis. That's what we deal with in those tapes. Amazing. And this book here, Moments with God, a dream journal. What's in it? That book is, is some things that the Lord gave to me in an encounter that I had with him, how to design a book that would encourage Christians to record their dreams help them learn how to record them and understand the importance, walk them through a step-by-step -step process of why this element means this and why we need to record it so we can see patterns in our lives and patterns in our dream processes knowing God. Both these tapes and this book for a $75 donation, or you can have the tapes by themselves for $40 and the book for $35, or like I said, both $75. By calling today, 1-800-433-1900. Online, www.bennyhinn.com. When you get these tapes and this book, not only are you receiving something that will bless your life, but you're also blessing the ministry so we can get this gospel to the nations. Amen. Thank you for your help and your donation. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be in Anaheim, California for a great service at the Anaheim Convention Center. One service only tomorrow night at 7. This Sunday, I will be preaching for Bishop Blake, 7 p.m. at West Angeles Cathedral. Then next crusade is Columbus, Ohio, May 30, 31 at the Schottenstein Center. We come then to Sydney, Australia, June 7 and 8 at the Sydney Entertainment Center. 
Then Dallas, Texas is June 27, 28 at the American... I'm getting many, many emails from the Middle East, all over the Middle East. We, I showed you yesterday on the map how we're covering just 90% of the amazing. Middle East, but only in English. And I've picked up a few little programs in Arabic, and the 700 Club puts subtitles in Arabic and a few things. But the burden of my heart was to really reach the Arabic-speaking people of the Middle East, and especially those precious Muslim people that God loves just as much as he loves you and me. And, and Brother Hori is, is the answer, and we'll talk about that in a moment. He's already doing some amazing... He's making Joyce Meyer speak... Arabic, just, right, just yes. like, it looks like she's really speaking it. Right. But uh, Brother Huri, first of all, welcome to Praise the Lord, or this is actually behind the scenes, and to Trinity Broadcasting Praise Network. Uh, this says Evangelist George Huri, yes. uh, Chairman, Middle East Christian Center. But first things first, were you born in a Christian family, or were you born in a Muslim family? No, I was born... Um, I'm a Christian family, a Catholic family. Catholic family, yeah. okay. But that didn't make you a Christian automatically. Oh, no, certainly not. When, when did you? Religion cannot make a real Christian. A real Amen. Christian is a person from any denomination, from any religion, which establish a relation, a direct relation with Jesus Christ and make Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So this is the real Christian. So how did that happen for Brother Huri? Oh, yeah. Thank Amazing you for this story. question. Amazing. Thank you Amazing. For, this, for this question. Well, I am now 72 years old, but I am full of the fire of the Lord. <laughs> At 65 years old, which is seven years ago, yes, sir. I was still general manager of two banks in London. I was still in charge in a bank in the United States of America in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. I was the founder of these three banks. I was also, at the same time, board member of a bank in Switzerland, of a bank in London, a bank of Beirut, Lebanon. You brought me a chairman, banker. Yes. <laughs> chairman of this, chairman of that. A big man, top of the financial world. And then I met with God, like Paul met with him on the road of Damascus. Really? You know, what happened is that I tried all my life to find happiness. And I thought I could find it through power, through money, through wealth, and through pleasure, through, through sex. So I divorced my wife. I left my children mm. because I wanted to be happy, to be free. Mm. I came to Europe. I was free. And God allowed that I obtain my dream. And I became rich. I became very powerful. I could afford all the pleasure I wanted. Mm. I used to change women every three months, just mm. looking for happiness. Mm. And I got hundreds of them, almost 1,000, asking Solomon. I said, why should I be with one wife mm. when I could have hundreds and be happy? But I did this to be happy. I got them all. God have allowed that I obtain this. I became wealthy, I became powerful, and I could afford any woman I wanted in my life. Were you happy? I did not find this happiness. Mm. And I found there is no happiness. There is no satisfaction in this world. You know, God created man to his spiritual image, to his image, spiritual image, and to have relation with him. Without this relation with God, through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, it's impossible to find this happiness and this satisfaction. A lot of businessmen and businesswomen are listening to me now. Some of them know me. Some of them are still ch chairman of bank, president of bank. Sure. They know me and they recognize me. And they know what I feel. All the businessmen watching me, they know what I'm talking about. They have everything. Yet they are not happy. They are, there is no satisfaction. So. Because there is no satisfaction without Jesus. Only him can give satisfaction. So when and how did it change? Seven years ago, when I was still, still general manager of these banks, I had a big problem. I was subject to a blackmail. A blackmail which have destroyed my career, which have destroyed uh, everything. I would have lost everything. This my one, job... This was one of the girlfriends, I'll bet. Exactly, yes. yeah. <laughs> you know, this is what, what, what happens. One of the problems that will, will occur. So 
I would have lost everything. My position, my income, my girlfriends, my friends, and you know that in the secular uh, world, your friends are the first to, to, yes. to, to give you a, a shock or a knife in the back, yes, but yes, not yes. in the world that we live now with Jesus. Amen. So in a moment of desperation, I cried to the Lord, <laughs> and I told him, if you are really the son of the living God, if you are really the one I am told that you hear and you listen and you answer and you talk and you wow. make miracles, mm -hmm. if you are really this one, make this miracle with me and solve my problem and transfer this blackmailer to a nice guy. <laughs> if you do this impossible miracle, then I will renounce him. I will tell the lady that is living in my house, go, and I promise you that I will not have sex outside marriage. If you do that, Brother Paul, in one minute, God solved my problem, and the person who was blackmailing me became a friend and a loving friend till this moment. Oh, a miracle oh. happened. Oh, my. And 31 years later, he went back to his wife. That's right. You're reunited with your first original wife. You know, I tried, I tried after that to cry to the Lord and tell the Lord, okay, I promised you no sex outside marriage now, but then find me a wife. I want this one. She is 35 years old. <laughs> but the Lord said, did not answer. No answer. So I said, okay, <laughs> she is not a believer. Mm -hmm. I found a believer in the Bible college where I went. This one is a believer. She will intercede for me. I preach for you. She is 38. She is wonderful. But the Lord did not answer. And one day, seeking for him, I told him, please tell me who is going to be my wife. I opened the Bible, and it's Malachi. And, 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 this, and the Lord said, you dealt treachery with the wife that you married when he was your, your young, the mother of your children, and go back to her. So after 35 years of separation, 31 years, excuse me, of separation and divorce, oh I went to my wife, I went to, to the house that I left 31 years ago, and this is where I'm living now. Oh, isn't it amazing? I think the Lord needs a hand on that. Glory you know, to God. that's... Oh, man. Glory that's to even, God. That is perhaps even a greater miracle than the deliverance from the blackmailer. I mean, they're both great miracles. Yes, the great miracle when he saved me, you know? Oh, I course. insulted him all my life. All my life I have broken all his commandment. You are going to tell me, uh, Brother George, you killed? Yes, I killed in, in allowing abortion many times. Uh -huh. This is a murder. All the commandments, I did break them. I insulted him, but he forgave me. Thanks. And he forget, forgot my sin. And he, he loved me. He showed me his love. So I love him. Would you say just that little short testimony in Arabic right now for those watching in the Middle East? Yeah. My friends, I'm in Lebanon, I'm Arab, and i أنا كنت شخص مهم جدا بالعالم عندي كل شيء عم عم بس فكر عم فكر بس كون سعيد ما كنت لاقي السعادة لا بالمصاري ولا بالعلاقات ولا بالجنس ولا بالقوة والسلطان جربتهم كلهم 65 سنة ما في سعادة ما في شبع بالدنيا بضل بده يلي معه مصاري بده أكثر يلي عنده قوة بده أكثر يلي عنده ملذات بده أكثر بس رغم إنه بياخذ الأكثر ما في سعادة ما في شبع الشبع بس لما تتعرفوا على يسوع المسيح مثل ما تعرفت عليه جربوا قالوا له يا رب إذا مزبوط مثل ما جوز شخوري عم بيقول لي إنه أنت الرب الرب الإله ابن الإله الحي يلي فيك تعطيني السعادة يلي ما عم بقدر لقيها لا بالمصاري ولا بالقوة ولا بالسلطان ولا بالجنس ولا بالملذات إذا فيك تعطيني هالسعادة أعطيني إياها وأنا بآمن فيك بآمن إنه أنت ابن الحي وأنا بخدمك وأنا بعترف فيك إذا بتقول له هيك راح بيلمسك وراح بخلصك جورج وين تشوف أي وود لايك أي وود لايك يا وود يو يا جو هيد يس أعطوه أعطوه فرصة ليسوع أعطوه فرصة يغيركم حياتكم هلا بهالدقيقة في يغيركم حياتكم بس إذا من كل قلبكم بتقول له تعا ليكو بيعطيكم السعادة بهالدنيا هيدي بيعطيكم الراحة بهالدنيا هيدي ما بتقعدوا تخافوا من الموت هيدي بيعطيكم اياها بهالدنيا هيدي بيعطيكم الفرح والسعاده وبامن لكم حياه بالسماء معه الى الابد هيدي كله ببلاش بيعطيكم اياهم كل شيء بدكم تقولوا له 
نعم بدي اياك تعال عندي وهلا فيكم تقولوا له تعال عندي اعطوها الشانس وحياتكم شوفوا كيف حياتكم مغيره بالمسكوا حياتكم و... 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 وبيجي الرب الاله خالق السماء والارض بيسكن بقلبكم صلوا ورايا هالصلاه من كل قلبكم على صوت عالي وبتشوفوا كيف رح بتحسوا بقوته رح بغيركم رح بيعطيكم سعاده بهالدنيا هون ولذه وحياه مريحه بمشاكلكم رح بكون معكم ما بعرف تحسوا بقوه مشاكلكم لان هو هو بيتحمل عنكم وبيعطيكم سعاده ابديه هلا وبالوقت بهلا بهالتكه ما بتعرفوا تخافوا من الموت ابدا ان تعرفوا انه الموت ما له تاثير لكم لان اللي بتموتوا بتصيروا معه بالسعاده الابديه رجعوا رجعوا الصلاه من ورائي من كل قلبكم يا رب يسوع المسيح انا بعترف انه انت ابن الاله الحي انا بعترف انه نزلت من السماء كانسان انا بعترف انه مت على الصليب لاجل غفران خطاياي دفعت على الصليب ثمن الخطايا انا وقمت من الاموات وانت عايش للابد على يمين اله الاب يا رب يسوع انا انسان خاطئ سامحني خطاياي غسلني بدمك تعس كون بقلبي بعطيك حياتي وبتعهد انه اخدمك كل ايام حياتي اه اه مان امين 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 اه مان اه وي هوب تو ريسيف ماني تيستيمونيز اوف بريشس ارب بيبل ناو ريسيفينج جيسس كريست هي سبوك فيري بارتلي اي اي انديرستود موست اوف وات وات هي سيد اند هي سبوك كوايت بارتلي تو ذيم اباوت ذا لورد that without him there's no hope there's no life and he then he led them in the sinner's prayer and that was oh, powerful praise god. praise god well there's so much that we could talk about today i see many honors that have been granted to you uh, from just all over the world but i think the thing in the limited time we have today let's talk about your vision for my favorite subject christian amen. television amen you are working now to establish what another whole Yes. Arabic only satellite. Yes, the God for the Arabic speaking Indeed. people of the world. I am an Arab. Yes. And I met with the Lord and the Lord loved the Arab. He died for the Arab. So he loved them and he wants them to know him. And this is what what I have in my heart. So your hope is to develop a whole channel then. A 24 hour Arab speaking channel. Yes. In Arabic talking to Arab with their own language with their own culture indeed talking to them about the love of Jesus and you, because you know you know brother well Jesus said that this gospel shall be preached to all nations and then the end will come amen so we need amen. to preach the gospel to this area of the world well let me just tell our sweet partners hotbird 5 is over there right now i'm getting hundreds of emails from the middle east every day and we're already putting a small block of arabic speaking programs on so if you will help us and i know we've talked just briefly we've got a little more business to conduct even after the program today but uh i'd like to show you a couple of examples of what brother huri is already doing for benny hen let's let's have a quick look at uh, benny hen benny you will be on hot bird 5 speaking arabic sure enough the real arabic حسنا نقرا اشعيا 53 5 جرح من اجل اثامنا وامس عندما كنت اعلم عن ذلك قلت كلمه جرح تعني تعذب لانه تعذب من اجل معاصينا كلها ما هي معاصينا كسر الشريعه سحق من من اجل اثامنا اختبر الحزن كلمه سحق في العبريه تعني اختبر الحزن سحق من اجل معاصينا ما هي معاصينا؟ هي ما نقل إلينا من أبائنا ما ولدنا معه قال داود في مزمور 51-5 في الخطيئة حملت بي أمي نحن مولودون بالآثام لكني فرح لأن المزمور يقول باركي يا نفس الرب الذي يغفر كل كل آثامك ثم نتابع القراءة من أشعيا حل به تأذيب سلامنا. Well, we we thought we would get Brother Brock yes, speaking a little more Arabic. Yes, I want to hear my Arabic. friend Brock speaking <laughs> Arabic, but I don't even understand what what I was saying. That that Arabic, I I don't really understand. That's that uh, classical Arabic that you have, right? This this is the Arabic that everybody understands. This is the written Arabic. 
Okay, well, this I don't understand the written Arab, Arabic. Yeah. All the Arab countries understand this language. This is the language spoken in the United Nations. This wow. is in, in conferences. This is the Arab that everybody understands. Now, that Arabic, I do not speak or understand. Would that be kind of like old King James English compared to our modern language no, of English? No, this is a modern Arabic, oh, which modern. everybody understands. So how the same. come I don't understand it? It's the same. How come I don't understand it? Oh. Maybe, maybe you need to help me. Well, I'm sure you, you will with some practice. I know that you do speak <laughs> Arabic. You, okay. All well, you need is some practice. I, I know that. I, and I you spoke. will be talking directly in Arabic to them. Oh, I pray. Uh, that'll be me. I spoke what? The street Arab with the children when I was a little boy with, you know, Tyler Henny Yawelid and Emshi Yawelid and Iskut Yawelid. Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yahamar Yawelid. This is what we won't say now. That's naughty. This is before we were saved. Yes, right. Oh, dear. Joyce Meyer, he's also translating Joyce Meyer also into the Arabic language. So the answer to my prayer has come today. Amen. الفاصل الوحيد بينكم وبين الانتصار هو القيام بما تعرفه أنتم متحمسون لن تقتلوني لأنني أعيض جيدا من يعلم أنه للبعض منكم الفاصل الوحيد بينكم وبين الانتصار والقيام بما يعرفونه جويس ماير سبيكس فلوينت أرابيك you know and that is hard work you know it's one thing to just have what we call the UN style where you turn the English down low and then bring the Arabic no. or other language up loud but your lip syncing it that's difficult George even was talking about like on on our program where he can translate those introducing the healings he can translate those who are That's talking right. to me like those who are healed yeah. so it's like a whole team of people doing this yeah. okay. all in Arabic all well, in Arabic and brother George until yes. you're able to really create the whole channel yes and and that's going to be a big job to have 24 hour a day all arabic language certainly, programming certainly. uh we can work together and if you can help benny and joyce meyer and even maybe some of our team not a whole lot of our tbn pro most of our tbn programming is very western in its culture and and so forth but you know when benny hen preaches there is no culture there. It's That's the right. word of God. Absolutely. No absolutely. problem with that absolutely. at all. Absolutely. So we want the good hardcore preaching and Indeed. miracle services oh, uh, to be on. And we will carve out a block of time in the morning and maybe in the later evening. And uh, if you can furnish the Arabic speaking programs, what do you think, dear partners? That would be is, exciting. This is wow. the answer. This is the answer to what I've been struggling with. Amazing. I've been trying to get Anna Shirosh. He won't get busy and do it. Anas, it's time for you to do that in, uh, the Arabic language program. He'll do it sooner or later. But see, that's still just one program. And then uh, I have a dear brother from Egypt. He, he doesn't want his name known yet, but he taught Islam in one of the big universities in Cairo, Egypt. He's living now in the United States, and he's ready to do a, uh, a wonderful program aimed at bringing let, let, let me just read you one little letter a portion of a little letter here that is so interesting from a young man we never use names from the Middle East but he is living in the Sultanate of Oman but he's from uh, North Africa he just says uh, um, I am a Muslim but only in name he said I, I have never really regarded myself as such or even actively practiced this religion isn't that the case with many Muslims aren't they just kind of isn't the Muslim more culture than even religion in some cases you, you know uh, brother Paul the, the Muslim are lovely people they are very sensitive people they are they are really very nice people and I love them and uh, and what I want to tell them that Jesus loved them and Jesus died for everybody, and he loves everybody, and he wants to save everybody. Yeah. Well, this young man began watching TBN, and he just pours his heart out in this letter. His, his childhood was very unhappy. His brother committed suicide. He fell into deep depression. 
even thought about taking his own life, but then someone loaned him a New Testament. And he said, I initially balked at the prospect of having to renounce my inherited sociocultural background simply by opening myself up to a foreign religion. The idea of giving up my nominal religion repulsed me. The odious Arabic words applied to the one who chooses a religion other than Islam terrified me. Uh, he goes on to say, I finally decided to resume my Bible study. It had a hypnotic effect on me. Soon the Holy Spirit started to speak to me through its pages. I was still hesitant because of my old self. It kept holding me back. Uh, however, I conducted a sort of comparative study between the Quran and the Bible. To my dismay, I came to realize that the Quran was no match for the Bible. He says, I have received now the Word of God. I regard myself as a convert to Christianity. I even pray in my own way, and it works. I have succeeded in establishing a personal relationship with God. I have also regained uh, my peace of mind and spirit through prayer and Bible reading. It's a long, beautiful letter, but I'll tell you, we're getting more and more of these. People are opening up. They're hungry for the Word of God. And now you have come just at the right time, Benny at just the right time, TBN, Christian TV at just the right time. Hey, together we're going to reap the final harvest. And the part of God, Paul, gets their attention. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, you know, I was over. I don't know if I've got time or not. Uh, we'll take a little of Steve's amen time if we have to. But I was in Egypt earlier this year, and Benny and I are going to Egypt. That's right. What? Just this in December, God December, willing, just yes, in a few days. And uh, now, what is it you hope to? We're going to meet with, of course, the Christian leaders over there. God willing, yes, sir. And, and a, but not a mass no, healing no, no, crusade no. ministry no. at this time. No, sir. Not in December. We're just going to go. Later. But later. Uh, God willing, later. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Oh, let me also tell you, Benny has agreed that he will. We will join forces in Russia next July. If you want a free brochure, we're reprinting the brochures, and uh, we're going to meet in St. Petersburg in the big Olympic sports arena. It'll be wonderful, especially you Russian-speaking Christians. Please sign up for the little brochure that is coming to you if you will just write and ask for it. Uh, this was a dear brother that fought in the uh, Egyptian army against the Israelis. Watch this very carefully. But this story you told me was from a different city. Was it Port Said? Yeah, it uh, was Port Said. But uh, first, first of all, I would like to tell you that uh, the Lord laid upon my heart uh, to pray for the Egyptian Muslims and the Christians and the Jews. Uh, because I've been in uh, the Sixth Day War, uh, 1967. I've been serving the military service and. Uh, I was in Sinai Desert, far away from uh, Israel, maybe 10 kilometers. So in, in that war, you, you're Egyptian, you were fighting against Israel, weren't against you? Against Israel. Yes. And uh, 6 o'clock uh, in the morning, I finished my duty. I was in a bunker underground, and I felt like uh, praying. I began to pray. I began to speak in tongues. The Lord spoke to me that I'm going to face so many uh, hard situations, but God is going to rescue my life and bring me back to my country safe. So uh, just to a couple hours later, the war started. And it's a, a big story, you know. Uh, I've been walking in the desert for six days. The third day, I lost my way. It was 2 o'clock in the morning, and I began to sing a song my mom taught me. Uh, it's an English song, I'll Never Be Lonely Again. You know it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your brother, uh, your brother was, uh, yeah, Philip was working with my dad in a suit. In the, in the orphanage, in the uh, Lillian Treasure Orphanage. He was pastoring a church close by a suit. And he used to come to our home 
and to uh, eat with us and to preach in our church. Now, did anyone hear you singing this song? So I was singing the song. Then uh, I saw far away a little uh, light. So I thought uh, that one of the soldiers opened the bunker and the light came from far away. So I said, I have to uh, direct my path toward this uh, light. But the light came closer and closer and closer till it hit me to my face. I was blinking my eyes. You know, <laughs> I saw Jesus in the midst of uh, the light. And just a few words. He said, I'll send you back safe to Egypt. Tell my people in Egypt that I love them and go to the whole world and tell them that I love them. But you know, I came to Egypt with uh, such a great hatred in my heart to the Israeli people. And I was working as a pastor in that time. And I decided not to read the Old Testament, not to preach from the Old Testament. <laughs> That's all about the Jews, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because such a great, a great, it, it was like a, a complex in my, uh, in my life, you know. So I did that for several years. One night, it was Saturday night, I was uh, writing down my notes to preach from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about love. Then the Holy Spirit whispered to my heart, are you going to preach about love? I said, yes. He said, how come you preach about love and you hate? the Jewish people. I said, Lord, it's a complex in my, in my heart, and I'm available if you want to heal me. So I knelt down, and I felt like cold water coming to the top of my head, swept over to my heart, and hatred gone. And can you imagine? I think the Lord needs a little hand on that, don't you? <laughs> I love that testimony. Oh, wow, wow. What a wow. precious testimony of how God Man, changed that powerful. dear Egyptian brother's heart. He now loves the Jews. He now loves all people. He's preaching That's what the Jesus does, Paul. Amen, amen. Wow. The True God love. The glory. Brother Huri, thank you for being here all the way from Lebanon today. Benny, thank you for love bringing you, him and introducing him to me. And uh, we will go back upstairs right now. We will talk some more of the business relationship of how we can work together and win precious Arab Muslim people to the Lord amen. Jesus Christ. Amen amen, amen. amen. Oh, dear. I wish we had more time. 30 seconds to say goodbye. Just drop us a note. The little book is on its way to you. How to Claim the Abrahamic Covenant. It's yours, you know. Read it in Ephesians chapter 3. The promises to Abraham belong to all of us if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Your best love gift during this week and this month of Praise-a-thon Renewal. God bless you all. To receive this month's love gift, send your pledge or gift to TBN PO Box A, Santa Ana, California, 9271.